Hello, welcome to Digital U. I'm Steve McCarthy. I teach journalism and filmmaking here at the School of Communication and Media. Uh, I've had a long career as a journalist and a filmmaker, and you might wonder why I'm starting with a picture of Mick Jagger, because I've interviewed Mick Jagger, um, and I've also interviewed a lot of other people besides Mick Jagger, including Muammar Gaddafi. So that's kind of the range of my career, if I had to put it in a quick uh, couple of pictures there. Muammar Gaddafi to Mick Jagger and everybody in between. So I now teach these young folks at Montclair State, and I'm having the time of my life doing it. I'm enjoying it. Um, and I have a particular type of lesson that I, I, I like to teach. And it, it, it takes a, a, a basically on all of my experience. Um, most of my experience was with CBS News and NBC News. I worked on 60 Minutes and Dateline. I produced probably for every kind of show on NBC News' schedule and CBS's news' schedule, the morning news, the overnight news, everything else. And then I formed my own company, McCarthy Productions, and did um, a lot of political documents like the Clintons, uh, 60 Minutes piece two years ago with Anderson Cooper, commercials, documentaries, uh, including this year, I have a documentary on HBO called Breslin and Hamill Deadline Artists. Um, but today, what I want to do is actually give you a lesson, much like I give my students at the School of Communication and Media. And it's a lesson in storytelling, video storytelling. And I use a piece, a story, if you will, that appeared on the nightly news more than 10 years ago. Um, but it was shot in New Jersey, and it's about a New Jersey soldier who went to war and came back and experienced some difficulties. Uh, the talent on it is my friend and partner, John Alter, who's a distinguished Newsweek columnist and an author. So without further ado, I'm going to play you what we call the New Jersey Soldier um, story. And again, it was shot in Bridgeton, New Jersey, and it aired on the NBC Nightly News. And it's only two minutes and 24 seconds. The Sanabria family of Bridgeton, New Jersey, was thrilled to have 26-year-old German Sanabria back from two tours in Iraq, home for good. He has so many goals in mind that, that he wanted to accomplish. When Sanabria came back to Bridgeton, he seemed fine at first, even making the dean's list at community college. But then his family began noticing he had brought the war home with him. He would think people was trying to hurt him, people was trying to poison him. Sanabria didn't talk much about his time in Iraq, about how he'd been the sole survivor of an attack on his Humvee. And now, like 300,000 other veterans, he was showing signs of PTSD. He would cry and say, I need help. One night, police officer Anthony Keller responded to a call at Sanabria's house. It turned out Keller knew Sanabria. They both attended Bridgeton High School. Keller, also a veteran, called the VA. And within days, the family drove Sanabria to the Philadelphia VA hospital. He was getting more desperate. He stopped the car and tried to, like, jump off the bridge. Like, he was suicidal. After two hours in the waiting room, his family asked about him. I go ask for him, and he's like, oh, he's been out of here for an hour. So he left the VA without telling you? Nobody was watching him. Sanabria finally showed up back at his mother's house. Early the next morning, something went terribly wrong. An emergency call was made from the address. Once again, Officer Keller responded. Police reports detail a bloody scene. Sanabria was assaulting his 79-year-old stepfather with a steak knife. Keller jumped on his friend and tried to disarm him, then fired a single shot, killing Sanabria. You mean to tell me that all these cops couldn't handle one single guy? The stepfather barely survived. An official probe found that deadly force was fully justified. It's a tragic incident. I'm very sorry for their loss. I just wish that he had a chance, like everybody else, to get help, to have a family, kids. He didn't have that chance. And it hurts. It really hurts. <laughs> a soldier, a family, a town. Torn by war and the wounds it brings home. Jonathan Alter, NBC News, Bridgeton, New Jersey. <laughs> That is two minutes and 24 seconds. It's essentially an opera, right? It's an incredible story. It had to be that short because it's the NBC Nightly News. We wouldn't get it on if it was any longer. The economy of words, the economy of, of, of images, 
is, is pretty intense. And to get squeezing it down requires a lot of hard work. But what I do with my students is I go through it. I go through every shot um, and tell them why it exists and how it exists and how we got to it. So let's look at the first sequence, if you will. The Sanabria family of Bridgeton, New Jersey, was thrilled to have 26-year-old German Sanabria back from two tours in Iraq, home for good. Who, what, when, what, all those things, the W's, right? The Sanabria family, where? Bridgeton, Connecticut. What? They were happy to have their son back from the war. Right there, you've established what your story is going to be. Your viewer knows nothing about the story, so you have to be very basic in the beginning of it and, and, and create the place, the people, and what it's about. That was done in less than 10 seconds, and that's what you have to do. You have to assume that no one knows anything. Um, how did we, wh why did we start with this shot? I had the family together. How did I get that shot? I showed up on a Sunday, and they were all there together. I said, can you please have a seat, and, and can you look at some photographs of your son, something you might do on a Sunday? And that's what they did. And it'll come back in the end of the shot, right? And then the next thing... Bridgeton, New Jersey, was thrilled to have 26-year-old German Sanabria back from two tours in Iraq, home for good. And then... He had so many goals in mind that, that he wanted to accomplish. That's his brother. He had so many goals in mind he wanted to accomplish. Very quick soundbite, really quick, but says everything, right? Why do you need any more? And I'm trying to teach my students that you need to parse everything down to the essentials. Anything that's not needed can be cut out again and again and again. Now, this part that comes up is John, he's doing a stand-up or a bridge, we call it. He happens to be near a bridge in a town called Bridgeton, but that, that we, we won't go there. And this is where the story takes a turn, right? And this is where John goes on camera and says, look at me, I'm, I'm telling you something very important here. That's my philosophy about these bridges. And listen to what he says. When Sanabria came back to Bridgeton, he seemed fine at first, even making the dean's list at community college. But then his family began noticing he had brought the war home with him. So this is the turn in the story. Things were great at first. He came home. He made the dean's list. But then the family noticed he was taking the war home with him. Now the story turns. And where are we? We're only 27 seconds in the story. So again, time, time, time. Broadcast television, particularly network broadcast television, is all about time. It's all about time. It's time is money, uh, literally. He would think people was trying to hurt him, people. People were trying to hurt him. Now, now if you also, you look at the shooting on this, on this, we're very, this is his sister-in-law, we're very tight on her. Um, you see both of her eyes, her eyes are lit. If someone's talking about something this serious, their relative, getting killed, going to war, coming from, go in for the tight shot. People talk with their eyes. People talk with their face. Don't be afraid, I tell my students, to go in and push in. Now, some places they work, that might be too tight for them, and, and you have to abide by the rules of where you work. But generally, if you have an emotional piece, and the best pieces have conflict and emotion, which this piece has both, um, go in, go in, go in, go tight. Who was trying to poison him? Sanabria didn't talk much the about his time we got in Iraq, from the family, about how he'd been the sole survivor of an attack on his Humvee. So he was the sole survivor of his attack on a Humvee, the reason for the PTSD, right? One night, police officer Anthony Keller responded to a call at Sanabria's house. Context, context, context. 300,000 other veterans have this. This is not just a story about Bridgeton, Connecticut and one kid. It's about 300,000 people suffering from this. So that's the context. That makes it a national story. That makes it worthy of being on NBC Nightly News. Cry and say, I need help. One night, police officer Anthony Keller responded. Okay, police officer Anthony Keller. The Bridgeton police would not cooperate. They would not allow me to film with a Anthony Keller. So what do you do? You go to the police station and you photograph police cars, signs, whatever, because you know you're going to have to talk about the police role in this. So that's what I did. And uh, that is sort of the coverage, if you will. The, uh, I liken it to pieces of wood to build my story. I need photos. I need, I need video to do this. Responded to a call at Sanabria's house. Responded to a call at the house. Now, I knew the house was going to be central because that's where he was, uh, what happened, where he was shot, right? So I shot it many different ways, many different times. Again, you're going to a place, take your time, get the shots you need. You're going to have to edit this.
It turned out Keller knew Sinatra. We did get a picture of Keller. It's the oldest TV, uh, rather the oldest journalism trick in the book. What do you do? Go to the local library and get the high school yearbook. And you'll get a photograph of a guy if he grew up there. So we got a photograph of Keller. And they both attended the same high school. We got a, his picture, uh, Sinabria's picture. So now we have joined our two characters together in, the, in this drama, in this opera, opera. They both attended school. Not together, but they both attended the same school. So it makes the, the story even more interesting. They both attended Bridgeton High School. Keller also a veteran. Now we're adding another layer onto this. This cop who went and responded to this guy with PTSD, he's a veteran too. And they went to the same high school. So it get, the plot thickens, it gets way more interesting. And again, we are only in the story in 55 seconds in. And you know all this information because it's been caught so tightly edited and the picture's supporting it that you know this in 55 seconds. The VA, and within days, the family drove Sanabria to the Philadelphia VA hospital. Within days, they drove him to the VA. We found this story out. What do you do? You're, you're, you're telling a picture with stories. You drive to the VA in Philadelphia, and you film it as if they're going. You need pictures to tell your story. So that's what we did. We shot out the front window. It wasn't very elegant or beautiful, but, but it almost like it put you there. He was getting more desperate. He stopped the car and tried to like jump off the bridge. Like he was suicidal. So he was suicidal, very important. I mean, he was really, really suffering, this poor young man. Um, we get to the VA, of course, we, we don't have an appointment to go in there and shoot or anything, so you shoot outside. You get the, quote, real estate shot. You get the title of it, VA Medical Center. And then you look around. What else is there to shoot that is kind of reflective of a soldier's story? After two hours in the waiting room, his family asked... The shot of the soldier with the rack focus. Two hours in the waiting room. You're talking about them being in that building. You need some pictures to do it. This is what you do. About him. I go ask for him, and he's like, oh, he's been out of here for an hour. So he, has, he had left without telling them. Incredible, right? Uh, sort of a lapse on the VA's... Part, I guess. So he left the VA without telling you. So important that we kind of almost repeat it with a quick question because that now we're holding the VA accountable a little bit to not really treating PTSD correctly. Nobody was watching him. Sinabria finally Another shot showed of the up house. back at his mother's house. Early the next morning, something went terribly wrong. Eventually, I got the police to talk, and it took a long time, but what I did was I asked them, could you just read what's on the police statement. And, and they did, and that was that. So he cooperated. An emergency call was made from the address. Once again, more Officer police Keller shots. responded. Police reports We have an investigation of, of the event. Sinabria Use the paperwork to help tell your story. With a steak knife. Keller jumped on his friend and tried Bring to Bring the words out. Then fired a single shot, killing Sanabria. And you mean to tell me that all these cops going Family was frustrated. Give them their due. The stepfather barely survived. But his, An official it was, it was justified. So you use a newspaper headline for it's that. A tragic incident. I'm very sorry for their loss. I just wish that he had a chance, like everybody else, to get help, to have a family, kids. He didn't have that chance. And it hurts. It really hurts. An emotion. The mother a soldier, crying. A family, a town. Torn by war and the wounds it brings home. A soldier, a family, a town. Torn by wars and the wounds it brings home. That's a tagline. That's really good writing. John Alter is one of the best writers that are out there. The mom crying. Um, yeah. Is it emotional? Yeah. Is it over the top? No. Uh, it's a very difficult thing for students to gauge. You know, how much emotion do I put in a piece without it becoming using somebody? I thought this was appropriate. Um, so, so this is a story that's an important story that we told because we went to war and we weren't really prepared for what was going to happen to our soldiers, uh, much like Vietnam. And of course, Vietnam, we all know they didn't take care of them at all. Uh, we wanted to do this. So John and I, another guy named Mike Barnacle, um, you might know him from Morning Joe, did dozens of pieces for the Today Show when these guys were coming home about them. Some of them were celebratory about them coming home and running a, a marathon with a prosthetic leg. And some of them were holding the VA to account. And some of them were just letting people aware that this was happening. Because the only thing that we can do as journalists is shine a light on something and tell a story. And hopefully, somebody will pay attention. And hopefully, somebody will fix the problem. Well, thank you very much for joining us today at Digital U. Um, hope to see you soon. And uh, stop by the School of Communication and Media. We're always looking for guests. Thank you.